So we're going to look at here the next major type of reactions, the next major category, which are oxidation reduction reactions, oftentimes referred to as redox reactions. And here we're going to see reactions that involve a transfer of electrons from one species to another. And the way that we're going to be able to tell that is because we're going to see a change in oxidation numbers, which we'll see how to assign here momentarily. But you've probably seen a lot of oxidation reduction reactions. They're just simply chemical reactions, uh, single replacement, decomposition, combustion, etc. But we focus on the actual transfer of electrons. So here we see single replacement reaction. If you take an, a piece of iron, like a nail, and put it into copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate solution, you will start to see copper coat onto the nail. That's a typical single replacement reaction. Now what we do is we can look at it first. Let's look at the net ionic equation. And we see that sulfate is in fact a spectator ion. And so at the core, what's going on here is solid iron is reacting with copper ions to produce iron ions and solid copper. Now what we want to do is look at this through oxidation numbers. Just like we had rules explaining solubility, we also have rules for assigning oxidation numbers. Of course, I've given you this on the back of your solubility rules, but we'll follow these in order to assign oxidation numbers and follow these redox reactions. So let's look here first. Our rule about oxidation numbers, the first one says that the oxidation number of an atom in an element is zero. So here, iron as an element and copper as an element they have oxidation numbers of zero. And then our next rule says for monatomic ions, the oxidation number is the charge of the ion. So the copper plus two ion has an oxidation number of plus two, and does the iron plus two ion. And so we can see that iron over on the reactant side had an oxidation number of zero products plus two. The oxidation number changed, this is a redox reaction. Same thing here. Copper went from plus 2 to 0. So this is in fact is a redox reaction. Ultimately what we see here is the fact that iron lost 2 electrons because it went to a plus 2 charge and copper gained 2 electrons because it went from being plus 2 down to 0 and ultimately then there was a transfer of 2 electrons in this process. And we will break this down into half reactions and other things in a minute, but that's at the heart and soul of these redox reactions that we're going to see a transfer of electrons, as we said, from one species to another. But let's practice these oxidation number assignments. And so sodium chloride, the rule states for halogens that it's going to have a minus one charge, unless there's some other specifics going on. But if the chloride is minus one, here we have an ionic compound. We know that the total charge must be zero, and so the sodium's oxidation number must be plus one. Again, matching what we typically believe for the ions of sodium and chloride. Br2, that is bromine as an element. Hofbrinkel, it's a diatomic element, so its oxidation number is zero. Sulfur dioxide, it's a molecule, okay, and in a molecule what we're doing is we are approximating our oxidation numbers. We're not talking about ion charges, we're talking about oxidation numbers. So sulfur dioxide is a molecule, and according to our oxidation number rules, oxygen is going to get a minus two charge, sorry, minus two oxidation number. And since there's two of them, that equals negative 4, and the sulfur has to combat that, so its oxidation number is going to be plus 4, because as it says, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a compound is 0. As far as polyatomic ions are concerned, the sum of the, poly the oxidation numbers here must equal the charge of the ion. So for bicarbonate, again, oxygen is assigned negative 2, hydrogen from our rule is assigned a plus one 
And so carbon has to make sure that this polyatomic ion equals negative 1. So three of the oxygens minus 6. One of the hydrogens is plus 1, so we're at a total of minus 5. In order to get to negative 1, this carbon has to be plus 4. Pause the video and see if you can assign the oxidation numbers for the next two species and check and see if you're right. So in perchloric acid, again, the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. There's four oxygens, each of them minus two, so that's a negative eight total. Hydrogen is plus one, so the chlorine here must have a plus seven oxidation number. In the chlorate ion, it has to add up to a negative one charge. So three of the negative two oxygens makes negative six. And so the chlorine here must be plus 5 in order to get to the negative 1 charge. So hopefully that went well for you. Now let's look at half reactions. And let's go back to our copper and iron reaction. So our net ionic equation for that is listed here. And what you can see is I've got two half equations. The first equation shows me that iron lost two electrons. The second equation shows me that copper gained two electrons, and that's how those oxidation numbers changed. Iron went from zero to plus two by losing the two negative electrons. Copper went from plus two to zero by gaining those. And so what we can do then is see where the oxidation happens and where the reduction happens, because oxidation is defined as the losing of electrons. Iron lost electrons, that's the oxidation half reaction. Gaining of electrons is called reduction. And a fantastic way that you can remember this is the wonderful phrase, Leo goes grr. Leo the lion goes grr. Losing electrons, oxidation. Gaining electrons, reduction. What a fantastic saying that can help you remember that. It may even get you a point on a quick check. Um, coming up here soon. So I'm just going to go through some examples of oxidation reduction reactions. Again, you have identified five major types of chemical reactions in Chem 1. Combination or synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. And a lot of these are oxidation reduction. For example here, combination, not all of them are are oxidation reduction, but when you have two elements reacting to form a compound, yes, because both of your elements have an oxidation number of zero. And so they change when they go into a compound. Aluminum, in this case, all right, chlorine's always a minus one oxidation number, and so the aluminum must be plus three, and so we can see that aluminum lost three electrons and the chlorine gained one. There's the end of class. Just kidding. In the next example, however, you can see oxygen is minus 2. All right. Calcium must be plus 2. And over here, sulfur must be plus 4, as far as our oxidation numbers are concerned. So over in this compound, oxygen is still minus 2. Calcium is going to be plus 2. And that means sulfur is still plus 4. There's no change in oxidation numbers here. This is not an oxidation re reduction reaction. It is a synthesis reaction, not oxidation reduction. Same thing with decomposition. Not all of them are oxidation reduction, but if we have a compound breaking into two elements, then yes, that will be. Single replacement reactions, yes, because they involve an element and one of its compounds. So again, there will be a change in oxidation numbers if, of course, the reaction occurs based on your activity series. And hopefully you might remember that. And you can see a common activity series here. There's one in the, your book. There's you, know, you can find them everywhere. But you have a ranking from very, very reactive metals like lithium all the way down to very non-reactive metals like gold and hydrogens there in the middle or towards the bottom. If I just enlarge this one a little, if you can read that, but it says, you know, the, the very reactive metals at the top will react with cold water and acids and replacing the hydrogen. 
then the next chunk of metals react with steam, warm water, not cold water. So they need a little more help with the temperature increase. They will also react with acids, replacing the hydrogen. Then you got a chunk that do not react with water, but they still do react with acids. Then you have, you know, from hydrogen and the couple metals underneath hydrogen will react with oxygen to form oxides. And then silver, platinum, gold down there you see pretty much unreactive and will only form oxides indirectly. And we'll get into more detail with those when necessary, but you get, hopefully you remember talking about the activity series and whether or not a reaction will occur. But you can see here that like lithium, potassium, barium, those are very, very easily giving up their electrons. And so they're very, very easy to be oxidized, losing electrons oxidation. Not so much down at the bottom, platinum, gold. They will lose electrons nowhere near as easily, so they're not as easily oxidized. Combustion, typically when we talk about combustion, a substance reacts with oxygen, usually releasing, releasing heat along with a flame. So here, you know, oxygen combining, combusting, it's elemental oxygen, so it's oxidation number zero. And so when it goes into a compound, like here we see with um, iron two oxide, then, sorry, iron three oxide, then yes indeed, we see an oxidation number change and uh, this combustion reaction is an oxidation reduction reaction. So most of them are yes. All right, so let's look at balancing oxidation reduction reactions. This is a big one and they will get some, your book even says some of them are so complex there's actually computer programs built to do this. But we're just gonna start with some easy ones and it's using the half reaction method. So here we have magnesium bromide reacting with aluminum to make aluminum bromide and magnesium. First thing I like to do is looking at the net ionic reaction and then breaking apart my two half reactions, oxidation and reduction. You don't have to do the net ionic equation, but it can be helpful. You can probably just tell that the bromine is spectating. But here we see, ultimately, the magnesium ion reacting with aluminum metal is creating the aluminum ion and magnesium metal. And so my oxidation half reaction, aluminum, is going from, is losing three electrons. Aluminum to aluminum plus three. As far as the oxidation numbers are concerned, aluminum zero, the ion plus three. Reduction-wise, magnesium ion is gaining two electrons to become elemental magnesium metal. So oxidation number-wise, again, plus two for the magnesium ion, zero for the magnesium in its elemental form. Now that I see my two half reactions, I need to cancel out my electrons before I can get to my balanced oxidation reduction reaction. So I line up my two half reactions and I need to get rid of the electrons. So I have to have the same number of electrons on both sides. Well, three coming out, two going in, the three two fix is with the least common multiple of six. So what I have to do is multiply my top reaction by two and my bottom reaction by three. And when I do that, I end up with two aluminums plus three of the magnesium ions plus six electrons, making two of the aluminum ions, six electrons, and three magnesiums. I can then cancel out my electrons and end up with my balanced oxidation reduction reaction. So hopefully this helps and we'll be practicing assigning the numbers and writing our you know, balanced oxidation reduction reactions as well as looking at reactions and finding what's oxidized and what's reduced. See you later.